want to do. Um, so I've literally enjoyed every moment of every situation, right? You figure I, hold on, yeah, I'm talking to y'all and I'm also like trying to do 12 different things before um, Rashad comes on. Um, I literally hey, what is going on? have, um, hey y'all, what's going on? I've literally been doing so much in the midst of the last series, right? And I thank all of you for, for tuning in and watching and supporting the last um, series. You guys don't understand how much that meant to me to have you be on that and be a part of that. But we're here. We are back with season two of One on One with the Courtney Starks. And why am I not doing this on my IG? I got my start on Facebook, right? So I figured, why not bring it back to the people that I love the most? And that's you. But I'm going back to IG after this one. I wanted to start off fresh. I wanted to start off, you know, strong. And today's guest is, man, 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 man. Like, you know, we are all in from the same generation, from the same era, but to watch somebody that's basically in your generational gap kind of just grow up and become a success and to hear his story about how he got his start is something that's going to um, really, really mind blow you. You know, it's going to take you to a place because, you know, he was able to do it. And if he could do it in his circumstance, we can do it too. But I'm not only going to talk, I'm going to bring this young man in. He is a actor, entertainer, CEO, entrepreneur. Let's bring in Robert Rashad. Hey, I'm on a meeting right now. How's it going? <laughs> Robert, what's going on, brother? What's going on, world? How you guys doing, man? You all right? No, we're good out here. First of all, thank you so much for starting off this season with us. Um, you're the first guest of season two of One More Recording Starts. So I'm honored. Thank you so much, my brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> Knock it off. Sit the big dogs go first. Love it. Well, first and foremost, I want to say, how are you? How has quarantine been for you, my man? Oh man, I'm just I'm I'm master. I've already mastered quarantine. <laughs> How about you? You all right, man? You no, good? I I I agree. Like we've literally done the same thing. I feel like for me, quarantine kind of heightened my creativity. Like I was in one space before cre um, before quarantine, and then quarantine happened. And I was like, well, you can't put baby in a box. Like I'm hey, not but, saying it. Hey, nobody know? puts baby in the corner, right? <laughs> so. One of the things that, you know, I, you know I, I watched one of your interviews um, recently and you were talking about your guilty pleasures. During quarantine, my guilty pleasure was snacks. I was a snack demon. What was your guilty pleasure? Oh, Chef Bobby, making sauces, cooking. Mm. That was my, uh, yo, I was like, listen, all the restaurants I can't go to, I'm gonna learn how to master all their foods. So I started making sushi and lamb chops and uh, 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 lamb and go all these different things, man. I got really, really into chefing. I created my own sauce. It's called Lay Bay. Yes, let's talk about it. So what what ingredients can you tell us that you put in oh, this no, sauce? It's a, secret, it's a secret sauce, but it's amazing. It goes great on fries, on salmon, on 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 your red meats. It's outstanding. Yes. Yeah, Everybody so asked me to catch up in life. I said, relax, lay, bae. So where is it? Where where can people get it at? Yo, just text me. 949-375-7485. You heard that? Did you guys hear yep. that? You want me to say anything one more time? Just, just can you text say anything me. to people one more time? Anything you need for suffering, I got you too. Listen, I'm repping right now, EPM. Yeah. You got to EPM right now. You know, we transform suffering for all, so... I got behind this company. They make all earth healing formulas. It's better science, better medicine. You can go to their website, epmproductx.com. Yes. Stuff for your face. Oh, their stuff for their face is amazing. It's all earth. It's called Allure. Mm -hmm. It's beauty rest in a bottle. It's made with all active ingredients. Uh, they got Reborn for muscle and joint pain. It's like fountain yeah. in a bottle. It's amazing. 
So, you know, we, we all know you from being like this well-renowned actor, but I wanted to start with EPM. How did you get into health and wellness? What motivated you? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, as far as the business goes, I started off as a customer. Mm. Um, I injured my leg. Um, I had like a, uh, I was at a Ruka gym in, Nor in Newport Beach, California. Yeah. I had a crazy injury. And so uh, uh, the, the lady at the gym was like, yo, try this Reborn stuff. I put a dime size on my pain. I could not believe how well I slept the next morning. I woke up, I could walk. And my doctor told me that I was going to be in pain for like three weeks. Oh, wow. So I'm like, what is this stuff? Mm -hmm. So I kind of got behind that. And as far as just like health and wellness, man, you know, sometimes like a heartbreak, it can really take you down. You and I was that. thinking that I need to be stronger in life. And so I kind of like got into health and wellness as a way to like be stronger through like heartache and hard times. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, and, and you know what? That's so weird, right? That a heartbreak can catapult you into something completely different. You know, I, I was hearing a story you were talking about, about meeting a woman who was like, what, 400 pounds? Yeah, and absolutely. How, Tiffany, like, Tiffany Carr oh my God. in North Carolina. She was like the first highway fit, um, you know, user. Like, she was like, you know, I, I've never known fitness and all I want to do is be under 200 pounds by my 30th birthday. She was 28 years old. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, if I could be of assistance to you and help, you know, that's like, you know, that's, that's a success in itself. Yeah. So she did high intensity. She did high highway fit. It's low intensity. It's no weights. It's no gym. It's no travel. So you ain't got to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect for quarantine. Um, and everyone's jumping on the highway fit bandwagon. You can go on my website, therobertrichard.com slash highway fit. All the instructions are there. All the medical agitations are there. It's great. And I, I was just telling some of my, some of my members here that that's how I got my start. I was yeah. watching your videos and I was like, I have no excuse to not get my big ass up and work out. Like I have no excuse. Like I don't facts. Know yeah, man. No, I, I appreciate that. You know, it's like, it's for all of us, man. You know, we have like our entrepreneurial lives, our jobs, our careers that, you know, are, can be very taxing on our time. And then some of us are family leaders. So we can't really get away from the gym when you're managing a little one in your household. Yeah. So I'm like, how could I create like, you know, something that's accessible, that's medically sound and physician endorsed. And uh, Highway Fit was the answer. Mm. And that's a, and I think that was God sent. Like, I think that was all God sent. Now, oh, you're we sweet. all know you from movies and shows. My favorite, once again, being Cousin Steven at one on one in House of Wax. Where, uh, for you, what was probably one of your most, most mem memorable roles that you played? That Honestly, man, know? I think my roles are kind of like people's kids. Like, yeah, I love all of them, you know? Like, I just mm. love that I've been blessed to be able to do what I do. And, you know, as a youngster, you know, I was told that I was going to be a statistic. Mm. And that's like something that I don't, I never want to sort of end up and have someone have like the, 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 the benefit of being able to say that that was true, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I sort of like, uh, you know, just kind of assign myself to things that are outside of what a traditional, you know, African-American inner city kid is going to do. And, you know, being of service is one thing, and you know, I, I like the snowball that I'm growing right now. Yeah, and I love the fact that you mentioned you kind of mentioned not wanting, you know, not wanting to be that statistic because growing up, you 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 know were told that like you were in affiliated with this gang, and that's kind of how you went over and found acting. So yeah, can you tell people a little bit about that story. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, I was in you know the Crenshaw area, Los Angeles. People know, like in the '90s, that was like you know devil's playground so and i was walking home and it was a rival gang and i was outnumbered and i, I really just didn't want to fight you know outnumbered so i kind of like uh dipped into this like you know uh random building and it happened to be an acting school yeah. and i was there just pretty, pretty much just killing time you mm -hmm. know asking for like a tour and asking to fill out an application whatever i could do to kind of like you know just wait out the the, the conflict outside yeah. and i ended up signing up and when i started my class like i didn't really participate too much Mm -hmm. But then someone asked me, like, if I was scared to act. Mm. I was like, scared? I ain't scared of nothing. <laughs> and that was kind of like what really kind of set me off and really wanted me to, like, you know, be the best actor that I could be. Yeah. And you've been doing that. You've been doing that for now, what, 20-plus years? Yeah, 24 years now I've been at it, man. It's been great, man. I still have a lot of energy for it. I, I love what I do. Yeah. Uh, I got great movies coming out, too. Like, if you're at home right now, you sit in front of the television, like, whether it's my horror film alone, that's on Amazon Prime, it's on 
Google, it's on iTunes, on um, it's on uh, AT and T, it's on video on demand, yeah. uh, or or you know people are watching one on one on Netflix right now. It's great. Mm -hmm. How was that moment for you when you were told that they were bringing this one one on one back? So now you have a whole nother collective of a generation who may not have watched now get to know Arnez. Absolutely, man. You know, like to me, like one on one being brought back is like the same kind of caveat that like bringing back Fresh Prince or bringing back Friends yes. or all those great shows that, you know, everyone loved. And like, it's great that I have, an, you know, the next generation is going to be able to enjoy it. I've already gotten messages from people saying like, I've watched the whole first season. They're like, I love this. <laughs> so it's cool that people can like binge watch a show that, you know, everyone in our league, we have to kind of like wait, you know, week by yeah. week. People can binge watch it now. It's great. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I want to ask you is that because you've, you've been in this game for such a long time, and you had to pour in a lot of hard work. What are your thoughts on the generation now who can kind of just post a video, do a little TikTok, a little reel, and get millions of followers and then kind of like make it versus our generation who had to do hard work to get here? Yeah, no, I mean, it's just different. We all have a broadcasting platform now and kind of like kind of roll the times like, when we were kids, like if somebody was talking about black and white television, we're like, get the heck out of here. Black and white TV is <laughs> done. Yeah. And so sort of like that, that old like slow rollout. That's not the world we live in now. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to be dinosaurs, man. You got to continue to like, you know, make great content, you know, be funny mm. or be sexy or be hilarious or be informational or a little bit of shock and all like some people do. And, you know, like, you know, we're, we're a fast consumption society right now. Like I said, yeah. you know, what will take, you know, 20 weeks to consume a whole season back when I was growing up. People are watching all that in like a day, you know? Mm. So it's like a high consumption, you know, society right now. And you gotta yeah. just, you know, be okay with that, you know? Yeah. And also kind of for me, because I think we, we grew up in the same era. We we're around the same age. So one of the things that I think I, I admired the most was the grind that the, that the young artists had, like the, com the sense of community, but also right. the sense of like respect for their craft, you know, right. and doing it all together. And I feel like maybe just me, I don't want to be a dinosaur either. Like I've learned how to use TikTok, IG, and the reels and all that. But a part of me just loves the hard work that it took. So that when we told the story, like how I'm talking to you right now, I can say, "Listen, I really did blood, sweat, and tears to get to point A and point B." You right, know what right, mean? yeah, right, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, with every discipline in life, you know, it's like you gotta like, you gotta work hard, but you also gotta work smart. Mm. You know, and like you know, right. the same way that like. A lot of industries that we all grew up with, like let's say basketball, the NBA, the yeah. NBA. Like when 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 Magic and Michael Jordan kind of hit the NBA, the the league switched. All mm. of a sudden, there was no look passes and people like sticking their tongue out and dunking. <laughs> and then you know Iverson came next, and yet it's like you know this killer crossover and all this kind of stuff. And the leagues continue to grow and become more international. And yeah. you know just with, with the, the social upload world. We're, so, we're super interconnected. We're getting more international every single day. And, you know, I'm a big fan of it. Mm -hmm. And everyone keeps having to take my shirt off. <laughs> you, you, you talk about, like, things that you are doing now. So talk to us about some – I know Alone came out on the 16th. And yeah. I've already watched it three times. So oh, I'm yeah, awesome. All in. What other films or, more, or show that you're working on right now? Yeah, so I got uh, – My Brother's Keeper is coming out um, this fall, too. It's my faith-based movie. Okay. Uh, I have uh, California Love. Um, it's a great movie. Actually, Nipsey Hussle was my role. So um, I sort of had to carry the torch for Nips uh, to mm. do this movie. It's outstanding. I play the lead. Shout out to Nip. Uh, I play Jay Hoover from Hoover Crip. Okay. And then, um, you know, I've got, like, obviously all my favorites. October sort of like my month for all my horror stuff. So, like, yeah. whether you're watching House of Wax or whether you're, you know, watching, you know, Kinky or, or uh, <laughs> yeah. Chocolate City because you're trying to get that extra sweet tooth during the month of October. <laughs> So you know? I, I, one thing I love and admire about you is that you pour into so many people, even with EPM, like you are constantly pouring and pouring and pouring yourself. Who pours into you? Uh, I think, you know, God, man, he's sort of like this, uh, the endless energy that's kind of like always like sort of fueling me, getting me up in the morning with that sort of like go fight, go win spirit. You yeah. know, I was, my, my brother asked me the other day, he says, you know, a lot of people, man, they have all the energy in the world for like entertainment, leisure, and recreation. Like if you're gonna do something fun, you got like, okay, let's go. Yeah. It's like, can you, can you bring that energy to like every part of your day, especially the part that's like, you know, your work, 
your passions, your ambitions, your assignments, your responsibilities, and hold yourself accountable that way. So yeah. I've really tried to challenge myself now to kind of have that philosophy of like, bring energy to everything that I do. Okay. And in bringing energy, out here at Courtney's Corner, we like to ask a bunch of quick questions real quick, just to get to know you a little bit better. What three words would you use to describe Robert? Ooh, uh, God, strong, and service. Mm, I like that. God, strong, and service. Because that is the culmination of what you need to kind of make it and be able to give back. I love that. Absolutely. What was your most embarrassing moment? Oh, man, it happens all the time. So I get my pants tailored. It's a dumb idea. Man. Oh, my God. Extra, extra work in some tailored pants, man. On March 17th, I uh, was on, had my tailored pants on. They were green. I was St. Patty's Day. I hopped on stage. My pants ripped in half. <laughs> man, I've been on auditions. They've asked me to dance my tailored pants. My oh. pants ripped in half. No. I got so many ripped pair of pants, man. <laughs> Damn. Sheesh. Hopefully I have a jacket on or something. Yes, please. <laughs> if you if you um if you could meet and have dinner with any person who ever lived, who would it be? And what would you ask him or her? Oh my God, man. Listen, first of all, it's, I have that dinner with that person all the time. And it happens to me, my grandfather. My grandfather passed away when I was 13. Mm. He comes to me in my dreams, man. He comes to me. He gives me, like, homework and assignments in my dreams. Yes. I'm so lucky to still have a relationship with him. So, yes. like, in my in my mindset of, like, who I don't want to have dinner with is, like, mm -hmm. it'd be my grandfather to be, like, actually in control of, like, you know, what I was asking him and him asking me, like, am I, am I reaching my potential? Yes. If you were not acting and it didn't happen that way for you, what could you see yourself doing? Oh, I would have been a, a NASA um, astronaut, a mission Ooh, specialist. I wouldn't even know what that was at that age. Jesus oh man. yeah, I'm just doing just doing doing science experiments <laughs> in space. <laughs> what yeah, is man. your What is your biggest fear? Uh, you know, I was raised to not be afraid of anything. You know, what I'm saying like you know you you gotta meet your maker. Yeah. You know, this whole thing is like a test, and you know you know Christ suffered, died, and was buried, and rose again, and you know, we're all going to have to have that, that moment in life where we suffer more than we ever have. And mm. I try to make sure that I kind of keep myself on like, hey, that's just part of the trial and part of the test. You know, yes. stay close to, to God's word, stay close to Christ and the Holy Spirit. And just like, hey, like, I can handle it. So I, I think that, you know, I sort of lean on that. I, I love that. I love that. No fear, all faith. Yeah, man, love absolutely. That. No fear, all faith. I love that. Yes. Who do you look up to the most and what qualities do you love about that person? I look at probably my dad the most. Um, okay. My dad, he, like, really, really puts family first. Family's kind of always the most important thing to him. And, like, my dad taught me that, like, your family can continue to grow. So it can be, like, first, like, your immediate family. Then, like, the people you invite to your family, like, your friends. But mm -hmm. your community your community is your family, too. You know? Yeah. And, just like, you know, your state and your country, that's your family, too. You got to make sure that you, you know, are educating people and let them know, like, what's valuable to us as a collective as a whole. Yes. So I think that my dad is that way. And then also, too, like, you know, he puts women and children first. Um, mm. I try to make sure that I, that I do that, too, just because I think it's important that, you know, as a man, that, you know, kind of stand up as a pillar, a pillar of society. Yeah. If you could give a piece of advice to anybody who wants to walk in the shoes that Robert Rashad has walked in, what would you say to them? Uh, TNDO, there's no days off. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that. T and yes. D L, there's no days off. And then also like pull one as you climb. You know, mm. like sometimes people get a little bit of arrogant with success, you know? Yeah. But you gotta kinda remember, like, you know, no one does it alone. You know, it's it's hard work, but it's teamwork too. So you gotta kinda like bring people along with you when you're like, you know, growing in life. And that's kinda how you're gonna like stay up there, stay on the top longer. Yeah. Like I, I always say for me, it's always like we're all in this together, right? Like yeah. at the end of the day, you can't do it by yourself. You know? Absolutely. On my little they said, it said team stands for together, everyone achieves more. So I try to keep yes. that in the you know, back of my mind. Yes. My man, thank you so much for coming on, for being a part. I I appreciate you guys. Please go ahead and follow Robert Rashad. Oh, man, or, great. Man, let me tell you something. EPM is great. It's, it's helped save my life. And uh, I, I know you. it will help thousands of, and thousands of others. We appreciate you for being a part. Our first guest, guys. Our first guest, 
So now you raise the ball even hot. You raise the ball here. So now I'm My bad for not having any champagne. But yeah, <laughs> listen, if you're suffering out there in any kind of way, if you have anxiety and stress, there's a, a product called Calm. It's all earth. It's baby safe. It's prenatal safe. Mm. Um, and you apply it topically. It's incredible. I love Calm. Yes. Um, like muscle and joint pain, reborn. And for your face, use uh, Allure Elite. If you have alopecia, hyperpigmentation, um, I have moles. I use the Elite. I order it. I wouldn't be telling you about it if it wasn't like superb, top of yeah. line, anything like it. My brother, I have to have you back. Like, I feel yeah. like I've created a new friend. So you are welcome. Everybody, this is Robert Richard. Please make sure you follow him. If you already started, he's on Netflix, one-on-one. -on -one. So do not miss out. Alone is out right now. So don't miss out on that. And we will be back, I want to say tomorrow, with an all-new episode of One on One with Courtney Stark. I love you for watching. I love you, Rob. Y'all have a good one. Love you. God bless.